Hi, Dom here. Now, forget gold, platinum, plutonium, and forget diamonds, because girls have a new best friend. Yep, you guessed it, endohedral fullerenes. At a recent auction, 200 micrograms of this material, that's about 1 15th the weight of a snowflake, fetched 22,000 pounds. That's over a million quid per gram, second only to the most expensive material, antimatter, estimated by NASA to be worth as much as 41 trillion pounds per gram. But don't expect to see any bony catwalk models posing in endohedral fullerenes. It's not that kind of material, and I'm not that kind of girl. Discovered by Richard Smalley in 1985 at Rice University in the US, endohedral fullerenes, or endofullerenes for short, well, slightly shorter, are created by incarcerating an atom or molecule into a cage of carbon atoms. In these cages, also known as Buckminster fullerenes, carbon atoms align in a similar way to the vertices of a football, which is where they get their nickname buckyballs from. Different variations have different properties with the potential for making materials stronger than steel and harder than diamond to ones with high heat resistance and superconductivity. This latest batch, manufactured by designer carbon materials in Oxford, are nitrogen endofullerenes, in particular NXC60 and NXC70. N of course represents the nitrogen atom, C is for the carbon, and the number after the C is the number of carbon atoms in the structure. The at sign denotes that the nitrogen is trapped within the fullerene cage. Their huge price tag comes from the extreme difficulty of making them, and are particularly highly prized because of their potential for producing very small and extremely accurate atomic clocks. Atomic clocks are particularly useful for GPS. For a GPS satellite to work out your precise position, the timing of the signals it sends and receives to your GPS receiver or sat-nav have to be just right. Current sat-navs don't have onboard atomic clocks, and so have to rely on the output from the satellite's clock. However, if the signal is weak, or if it's being jammed by an enemy, or you're having to regularly go in and out of a bunker, we are of course talking about World War III here, then maintaining a good lock on the position becomes tricky. But nitrogen endofullerenes might be about to change all this. Using this new material, atomic clocks could be shrunk to the size of a microchip, which could easily be incorporated into any portable GPS device. This may be particularly advantageous on the battlefield or in terrorist attacks, as portable atomic clocks will allow GPS to keep working even when conventional GPS receivers fail. And this is all down to the carbon cage that houses the nitrogen atom. By trapping the nitrogen like this, physicists should be able to do away with the large and or expensive equipment needed to control the atoms. They can also operate in a solid form, unlike current atomic clocks that have to use a vapour of atoms. And they measure the absorption of radio waves with electricity instead of light, which all contributes to them using far less power as well. And a fun fact, FUN FACT if I were holding a football and you shrank me down by a factor of 100, I'd be less than 2 centimetres tall, and my football would be the size of a sesame seed. If you shrank me down by another factor of 100, the football would be the size of a blood cell, another factor of 100, and it would be as small as a big virus like HIV, another factor of 100, and I would be as small as a particle of smoke, and the football would be the size of an endohedral fullery. Physicists are still exploring all the other potential uses of various endofullerenes. One exciting example might be within medicine. In certain cases, doctors inject patients with gadolinium, a chemical that makes certain tissues, abnormalities, or disease processes more clearly visible on a magnetic resonant imaging scan, or MRI to you and me. The problem is that this chemical is toxic to humans. However, if housed within the carbon cages, then the gadolinium cannot escape into the bloodstream, but can still be detected by the scan. Bloody marvellous. And all this from tiny teeny balls of atoms. Well, that's it from me. I've been Dom and you've been watching everything. <laughs>